Uh, we see a uh, uh, lot of uh, friends, a lot of people, non-believers, atheists, uh, they, they sometimes try to live a very good life. We see a lot of people calling them they are good people, though they don't believe in God. Um, can they enter the kingdom of heaven being that good? Or do they still need to have Lord in them? Uh, when you use the word good, what is the measuring stick? What is the standard? That's the question. Because uh, once uh, uh, a person, a young man came and uh, addressed Jesus, I mean, Jesus, right? Good teacher. Then Jesus turned back and asked him, why do you call me good? Right? I mean, I, I think he must have got the shock of his life. Because now we all know that Jesus is a good person, right? And, and, and uh, he was a teacher, he was, I mean, when he was on this earth, walking on this earth, he was teaching. So because of that, that boy came and addressed him as good teacher. Then Jesus turned back around, why do you call me good? Because no one is good. Jesus said, no one is good except God. So then and there, I think Jesus gave the answer, right? No one is good in his standard. God's standard, no one is good. All have fallen short of the glory of God. Everyone. So we have our own measuring standards that we have put ourselves in. Like, you know, we have put, okay, compared to that, that person is good. Compared to this, he is good. So we are comparing among ourselves, not with God. Among sinners. Among sinners. So, who is the be best, better sinner, <laughs> basically, right? So, <laughs> who is the better sinner? <laughs> now, God says, no one is good. Jesus said, no one is good. And therefore, no one will enter heaven on our own merits. Because in Isaiah, it says that all our righteousness is filthy rags before God. Whatever the good that we do, thinking that is good, in before his sight, before God's sight, it's his filthy rags. So therefore you need the real thing, Jesus. right? So his righteousness, his holiness, his character is what is accepted by the Father. right? So unless you have Jesus in you, you're not good. Right? Just because you have Jesus, it doesn't mean that you are good either. Right? That's why I said, you need to transform yourself. Or when, when I accept Jesus into my life, and if I don't transform my character into his character, then I'm useless. Right? The work of the Spirit is that. The work of the Spirit, the mission of the Holy Spirit in me is to transform me from my sinful image to the image of the perfect man, that is Jesus. So, if we are in that process, and if we work towards that, and if I go towards that path, that means I am going towards what is good, what is accepted by the Father. Then we will be with the Father. right? So, unless and until I obey His commands and His way of thinking and His uh, word, and if I don't align my life according to his word, then I will not live with him. It's simple as that. Right? And, and, and we cannot compare ourselves with each other and say that person is good, that person is good, why doesn't he go to heaven? And you know, it's, it's like uh, 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 prisoners in uh, uh, the jail comparing themselves to be who is the uh, better person among the thieves. All are thieves. Oh, but who is the best? <laughs> no, but God w w wants us to come to a different level in our life, in our character, and build our character according to Jesus' character. So the moral law or uh, the standard is set right above us? Exactly. So that, uh, exactly. That's why the law was given. The Ten Commandments were given. Because until the Ten Commandments came, until the law came, uh, the sin was there in the world, but sin was not ac accounted for because there was no standard and everybody did what was right in his own, own sight. 
But when the law came, that was a standard. Wow, this is the standard now. So everyone knew that they cannot measure up to that standard. And that's why God gave them the ways to come to God or get closer to him through sacrifices, animal sacrifice. But Jesus came and he sacrificed himself and stopped to the animal sacrifice. And then he said, okay, accept me, accept my sacrifice and you can come and become like me. And he gave us the Holy Spirit to do that. The comforter. Comforter and the builder. <laughs> Right. So, uh, so basically, you're saying we can't define what is good. Exactly. Uh, in a in you a know, in a atheist brother. Or God defines that. Only, only the whole pr problem is that uh, chatura. Because you see, in the Garden of Eden, God said, "Do not eat of that tree." Why? The day you eat of it, you will get the ability to define what is good and evil. Evil. So we are defining right now. What is good and what is evil? We can't do that. That's God's job. He defines what is good and evil. Right? So, uh, because man fell, and because uh, Adam and Eve ate of that fruit, and we got the ability to define what is good and evil, because it was called the tree of good and evil, tree of uh, separating or understanding the good and evil. We can't do that. We, we, we cannot define. It's God's uh, job to do that. And he's... he's, he's yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we see actually with uh, humans, it's very hard to come into terms. Uh, what is good and what is wrong. Mm. Uh, well, what is good to you may not may be, be good to me. Yeah. So Sometimes. There, there's a conflict. <laughs> there's there. a conflict there itself. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, that, that, that happens very yeah. often, I guess.